Welcome in everybody to the flagship podcast interview. I am Chip Brown of Horns247.com. Very excited to be joined by former Longhorn National Champ, well, always Longhorn National Champion, uh, former Pro Bowl safety with the Tennessee Titans, the one and only Michael Griffin. Griff, how you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? Hey, man, I'm doing great. I love our, uh, we usually talk about this time, maybe once in the fall, get a little you know, a few thoughts from you on uh, on your Longhorns. Now that you're a big television star on Longhorn Network, you get in all those meetings and you get to see what's going on. So, of course, we're going to come to Michael Griffin to to find out your thoughts on these these Longhorns coming out of spring football. And I want to play a little game, Michael. Okay. I've, I've, I did a confidence rating on each position. Um for the Longhorns and I'm going to go through these and then you tell me if I'm too high, too low or, you know, your thoughts. Okay. okay. All right. I'm going to go, I'm going to go from highest to lowest. Okay. So my highest confidence rating is a nine for the running back position. Uh, yeah. I give them what's the highest 10. Yeah. You know what? I might give them because they got a stable, a good stable of running backs. Um, we, we, you know, nine is good, maybe 9.5, but they got a stable of running backs. I mean, that, that room alone is, uh, it's almost like I'm trying to almost put them along the lines of possibly being one of the best, if not the best. Uh, but it, it's, it's, that room with uh Bijan, Keontae, uh Keelan, um just those three alone, not to mention the guys that are waiting their turn. You you saw what they are capable of doing when they got their opportunity. So um I, I really, really, really do like that room. Okay. All right. So uh my next highest confidence rating is defensive tackle at eight. Just because they're th like three deep, three deep at nose, you got, you know, Keandre Coburn, Tavondre Sweat, Byron Murphy, you got, uh, you know, at three technique, you got Alfred Collins, Vernon Broad, Morrow, Jomo. Your thoughts? Is that too high? That's too high. Okay. That's too high. That's too high. Because if you're saying highest and lowest, I think I'll go receivers. Okay. And I'm just going off production. You, you gave an uh, incoming freshman last year one year and he's done more than a lot of these guys that you just said that's been here three or four years i mean coburn is going on year six if you count the red shirt year plus the extra senior year so yeah the position group is deep but the production um it doesn't amount to what the receiving group was is capable of doing not to mention what Xavier Worthy has done already as a freshman we see what Jordan Whittington can do when he's healthy um and then you you, you add another receiver who we saw in the spring game um what he can do so I, I kind of like that room just better even though you say hey might not be as deep you were still able to get the um the production out of that room despite not being as deep what needs to happen michael and that it's funny you mentioned receiver because i had receiver at 7.5 you just answered that but what needs to happen at defensive tackle uh to get that kind of production because it looks like there are nfl players on the roster tavandre sweat looks like an nfl body you know we know byron murphy you just mentioned him but um you know what needs to happen at that defensive tackle position to get the kind of production that it seems like that talent warrants. I mean, you, you, the, the thing is you, for me, they have the talent, they have the size, they have the look, they have everything you wish for in a defensive tackle. But the problem is you, you go to the second game of the season, Arkansas just had their way with them. You then go to the TCU game and, it was like the battle of the the, the, the newbies of, at the running back position. And again, he gave up another 126 yards rushing. And then you go back on to the, the OU game. And again, 
they gave up tons of yards rushing on the same play. So you give them an eight, but the production, you know, when you're able to run the counters and you're able just to run at will, and then you go to, you know, the Baylor game, you go to Oklahoma State game. I mean, it, nobody was scared to run the ball on this team. And so, and, and, and so it's hard to, when you look at the defensive side of the ball, to say we're going to rank, rank them, you know, high because of, yes, you could say returning starters, returning players, the depth, yes, understandable, but the production is not there. And so that's where it's it's one of those things where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about this position because they have depth, but then am I really happy about this position because what is the production coming out of this room? And if there's no production coming out of this room, then who do you like at that position? Who do you like at the defensive tackle position? Um, I I, I thought I don't know because I, I keep thinking guys are gonna take that next step. But you know, Sweat started playing good at one point. Coburn was playing good at one point. Byron Murphy was, you know, everybody takes their 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 chances. They they scratch the surface and they show what they're capable of doing, but it's being consistent each and every week. Can you be consistent? And that's when you talk about the NFL, it's being consistent. And that's the thing that you don't see is there's no consistency when it comes to that room. It's like a revolving door. It's like, hey, all right, you go in there and you get your chance. You go in and get your chance. You go and get you got Byron Sorrell. You got a lot of guys. You got some young guys that kind of, you know, that play up to the seniors. And I just remember when I was at Texas, you know, when you was a younger guy, you had to literally just wait your turn because those, you know, starters, you weren't getting on the field. So that's the thing. When you say the room is deep, that's understandable. But when your second and your third strings is able to compete and do the same thing that your first string does, then that says that room is not really deep. We're just trying to find somebody to step it up and take charge. And that's how I look at it. All right. That's, uh, I mean, you, you hear coming out of the spring that Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton have taken a, another step, that maybe they're done with just trying to play and now they want to win. Um, do you believe that there is such a step? I mean, you, I think back to guys like you and Kenny Vaccaro who were making plays immediately on special teams. And anytime you got in the game, um, you know, and I get the trenches are a little different, but still Casey Hampton led Texas and tackles practically as a freshman. So, and he's a freak and he's, he should be in the pro football hall of fame, but you know, do you buy that Alfred Collins, Vernon Broughton, you know, are ready to take another step? I mean, you you want to believe it, but you know it it's it's one of those things that you, you got to see it. You know, it's one of those things you got to show me. You know, um, you got to show the fans, you got to show your teammates, you got to show yourself, you got to look yourself in the mirror. So, you know, do you take the next step? That's that's really on the players. That's what they want to do. Um, you know, it's 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 hard to me to get a good judgment when you know that the offensive line. Uh, one was banged up, but two hasn't been one of the strengths on the team in the past. So when you see these guys getting after it, especially in spring ball, you're like, okay, you look good. You take the next step, but then you're like, okay, let's not forget who you're playing against. And so, um, and and to your point, you you go back and say the D, the interior D line, you give them an eight, but we just saw uh Roshan break off a 50 yard touchdown running straight through the middle so again do you see where my question is is that at, at no point if they they've you know gave the production you know I, i'm so used to when we play you got guys like um you know marcus tubbs and and um you had you know tim crowder and and, and brian robinson and brian Arakpo and and just all Frank, oh, you had all these big body guys up there, but they gave production as a, as a defense, as a, as a secondary. There's not one game that I was curious or worried that, hey, they're going to get to the next level, unless we were playing a good team like, you know, Oklahoma. But every week it wasn't what we saw last year, that it could be TCU, it can be Texas Tech, it can be, 
you know, uh, even looking at some teams that we knew that's all they had. When you look at Iowa State, hey, listen, they're going to run the ball, but you go into the game to stop the run and you still allow them to be able to run the ball. So um, that's where the question marks are. You hope they take the next step. You hope they take ownership. You hope they have a bad taste in their mouth. But again, as a fan, as a former player, you know, it's only so much hope that you can hope for because at the end of the day, none of us are stepping aside those white lines. It's those players, and they have to understand that, and they have to go out there and give 110% and get the job done. Okay. All right. Let's move on to uh, quarterback. Quarterback, I have a confidence rating of 7 on a scale of 1 to 10. Uh, Quinn Ewers, upside, haven't seen it yet. Hudson Card. Same thing, kind of. I mean, uh, lacks pocket presence last year, lots of upside. Should know the offense better in year two of the Sarkeesian era. Um, you know, Malik Murphy, we didn't get to see, but by all accounts, he's got, got the biggest personality of any of the quarterbacks in that room. Um, your thoughts? Seven, maybe a little high. Um, I mean, yes, we know yours. He can, he can make every throw. He has a little Aaron Rodgers feel to him, just the way he throws the ball away, gets the ball out of his hands. Um, big arm, nice, beautiful arc on the ball, which we saw. Um, but again, it's one of those things where I look at the offense. You can know the offense, but if you look at the offense as a whole, last year we saw that Texas offense was able to put up a lot of points early in the games due to it was like those bread and butter plays that we rehearse all week throughout practice. Those those top those first 15 plays. Um, but when I noticed that, you know, being able to have pocket presence, being able to stay in the pocket, being able to deliver the ball on time, timing routes and those things, understand what the defense is and throw off that. I don't know if these young quarterbacks have that yet. I saw that you were throws a beautiful ball for a touchdown downfield, but then you come back and you just stare at your receiver the whole time until he breaks the end breaking route. And I think it was Cook or somebody was able to get an easy interception. So those are the things that you ask yourself, does the good outweigh the bad? Can you make more Can you make more good plays than you make bad plays? Hudson Card, I, I feel like he has all the tangibles. Uh, he has a strong arm. You can tell he has a Jay Cutler feel. He's a, he's a slinger. But he also, at the same time, he has to be comfortable in the pocket. I think um, for him, I, I – I think he probably has the more upside, like you said, second year. You go back to the former quarterbacks of the Texas era slash any other era of any other team. You know, that first year, a lot of these quarterbacks struggle. Um, you can go to, you know, guys that's playing in the National Football League today. I mean, even Cam Newton, you know, he bounced around until he able was able to find his, his spot where he needed to be, and he was able to be a good quarterback. Um you look at Colt McCoy, his redshirt freshman year until his redshirt senior year. Vince Young's redshirt freshman year until his redshirt junior year. Those are all different quarterbacks when you look at your first year playing to your last year playing. So, and we can even go back to Sam Ellinger. I mean, people were questioning him after his first year, throwing interceptions at the end of the game. But then you saw what he meant to this team his last year. So, uh, it, it, it's a question mark still. Um uh, First game should be pretty easy. Second game is going to be a welcome to college football. Uh, but I think right now Sarkeesian has his hands kind of uh, – uh, I feel bad for him right now because naturally, you know, you go get yours. He's supposed to be this next level talent, and he does have the talent. But the question is, mindset-wise, if he goes out there and doesn't have success right away, can you ruin this young man early because he technically probably has not faced any adversity? And then you have Hudson Carr that you're asking him, hey, can you get that that leadership role? Can you step up? Can you take that next step? You had the experience. So um, I like the room. I like the potential that they have. The question is, again, you go back to the offensive line um, and you ask yourself, hey, if we do have to put the ball in their hands to win the game, we, you know, a defense gets up and, Hey, we're going to stop this run. We're going to make y'all beat us with you, you know, quarterback wise. We're going to make y'all beat us, um, which I can see every team across the country saying we're going to put it in the quarterback's hands. Um, again, you, you don't know because we only got to see a, a glimpse of it. And let's not 
forget that Ewers hasn't played football in almost what going on two years now. So um, he's literally supposed to be going to prom sometime now. Uh, so again, he's still 18. He's a kid. I mean, last year he skipped out on his senior year to go to Ohio state. Um, but he's supposed to be in high school. I mean, he played his junior year. I think he was a little bit banged up, comes back senior year, opts out to go get the UIL money, NIL money. And now you're back in, 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 you know, spring ball and you're getting to know your, your teammates, you're getting to know a new campus. And again, you're still a young, you're still a kid. You're still a young man. I mean, you should supposed to be waking up in mommy and daddy's house every day, going to school and just being a kid, hanging out with friends. So it, it's a big responsibility that you, you ask yourself over the summer, going into fall ball, can he take that next step or can Hudson Carr take that next step? So the potential is there, but um, again, it's, it's one of those things that we, we're going to have to learn on the fly. All right. So I get the feeling you know, you kind of like Sark. You've said you feel sorry for him. You film those LHN commercials with him. What are those what are those moments been like? And what do you what do you think of Sark? Yeah, I, I like Sark. I think he's a he he's he's a great guy for the job, great man for the job. Um again, it's it's the style of offense, and that's the thing that, you know, as a coach and people, the fans gotta understand is that when a coach comes in, you inherit those players from the previous, you know, regime. And a lot of times those players were recruited and built for a certain type of offense. We know that Tom Herman's offense pretty much derives around a running quarterback, uh, big, tall receivers, big body receivers, Jordan Humphrey, Colin Johnson, those type of guys in the past. But, if you look what Sark has been accustomed to, he's used to guys that can fly, that can roll. You look at Xavier Worthy, prime example. He's looking at, you know, dual stop, dual threat uh, running backs, guys that can, re you know, receive the ball out the backfield, but also can run the ball. Um, he's more of a pro style type offense, even though I know college football is more of 11 personnel, maybe one tight end, multiple receivers and one back. But again, he's used to having a quarterback that can sit in the pocket and deliver the ball guys that can stretch the defense and things of that nature. So you got to give them some time. You saw right now recently with this last recruiting class, offensive line, defensive line, but we all know it starts in the trenches. But you can see that he's trying to get the guys to fit the mold of what he likes to do. Um, last year, I mean, you had guys that transferred out, Keonta Ingram, different guys like that. But also, you got to understand that we thought Joshua Moore was going to take that next step, being the starter. He, unfortunately, I guess he just needed a new change of scenery with Texas Tech, so you wish him well. But, you know, we know the draft just ended, 262 picks and no draft players. But you can't put that on Sark when these are not his guys. But if you want to look at it, bright spot, Keonta Ingram did get drafted. He was a guy that was recruited and signed with the University of Texas before he decided that, hey, you know, Bijan is about to be the man. So he went on to USC, finished a good career. Um, but again, you got to give coaches time to establish what their their offense is, what their team is going to be, what their identity is going to be. Um, it just takes time. I mean, you go back and you think about it. Um, even Mac Brown had a little bit of time to get to where he got to and things of that nature. And you saw the good things he did at Notre, uh, at uh, North Carolina, and, and the players love him. And you see the guys that he's put in the National Football League now from North Carolina. So I think you just give him some time. Um, he's honest with the players. You can tell the players have a little bit of um, more attitude about them. You see they're more happy. Um, and, and to me, the biggest one of the biggest things is, you know, a guy like Roshan that can possibly go any other school and start right away as the primary running back. A guy like him who says, hey, I'm going to stay. To me, that tells you something about there's something about Texas that he loves, that he likes, because that's a guy literally that can go somewhere else and that can play and get 20, 30 carries a game. But he's a guy that opted to stay and, you know, understand his role. He's a guy that'll be playing on Sundays. And so, um, Again, I think that tells you something about because in the past we've seen guys jump ship that were starters. You don't see guys jumping ship that are starters right now. You see the guys that are like, hey, writing's on the wall. I'm not going to get the play. So let me see where else I can go. So 
I think you're starting to see what this team is going to be, their, their culture is going to be, um, and what this team is going to be known for. All right, let's take a quick break with uh, Michael Griffin uh, here on the Flagship Podcast interview. When we come back, we'll get into this defense, get his uh, position rating thoughts on the linebacker and safety position. And if you're watching us on the Horns 24-7 YouTube channel, Michael, we'll, we'll get right into it. I've got a six and a half on linebacker and safety. Uh, six and a half. That means you're right above average. Um, Again, you, you got these positions. I, I guess right now, the secondary alone, uh, we can hit on that. I know you got safeties and things of that nature. You know, you, you've been seeing which guys want to take that next step. I'm starting to see that they're kind of moving some corners to the safety position. I guess getting a little bit more athletic than saying, hey, we just got strictly safeties out there. The linebacker position, you got DeMarvion Overshone. I like his attitude. He's taking over this. He's taking over. He has the mindset. Um, he's a guy that I, I loved ever since he was an uh, incoming freshman. Unfortunately, he was banged up with some injuries. But again, he was a guy that whenever he got the opportunity to get on the field, he made his presence felt. Um, but I mean, the linebacker after him, again, it's it's a question mark because you, you again, he's a former safety that got moved down to, to linebacker. And, and now you're moving corners to safety. It, it's still a question mark because you're trying to figure out is all this going to work out together. And we all know that the linebacker, position the safety position it doesn't work well unless the d-line gets after it and so it all works together despite the fact that you can have a one of the best players at either one of the positions if you don't have that 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 defensive line up front it's just it doesn't matter you're never going to see that potential but i think um uh, i think you have you have potential you have a lot of potential in those rooms it's just again are they willing to take the next step or they're going to be another defense that gives up 30 some plus points a game again. So that's, that's the biggest question right now. It seems like at linebacker, they weren't, they were not physical enough last year. And the big push this spring was for Jalen Ford, David Benda, that those guys were playing more physical that it even pushed to Marvin Overshawn to be more physical. How do you see that linebacker position and what needs to happen for it to improve? I don't think necessarily it's being physical. I think it's just knowing your assignments. Um, last year, I mean, there was plays where, you know, you got guards and stuff are pulling, and the linebackers are not going with them to know where they fit in the gap. So it's not necessarily being physical. It's just knowing your assignment. It's knowing when they run the counters, when they run the different type of, uh, you know, schemes. You got to understand those things and understand where you fit. I think going back to the Arkansas game, there was a play where I seen the linebacker all the way out on number three, but didn't understand that he still had the B gap. And yes, it's stressful, but that means back up a little bit. And I think those little different nuances to the game, when they understand those things, it makes them that much. But if you just hit your gap, it it, it literally makes the running back stop his feet and keeps going east and west. But when you allow the running back to go north and south, which we saw a lot last year, that's when the game gets ugly. So it's just those little things. It's not necessarily being physical. It's just knowing your assignment, just getting your job done. That's really all you have to do. And I think last year, that was the question mark is it was like they were just playing. They were reacting instead of knowing what to do. Like it just so, yes, defense is a reactive type thing, but knowing your assignment instantly as soon as you see the action reacting to the right um, to what your job is compared to you, you kind of trying to run under blocks and just not knowing where you're going. I think that was the biggest issue last year. Okay, I've got a six and a half for the cornerback position. Tell me, how did you get that? Uh-oh. Uh, how about uh, a lot of faith in Ryan Watts at the boundary corner? And... I'm going to tell you right now, Ryan Watts is a safety. Okay. He's a safety. If he, if he wants to play the next level, he's a safety. I'm just going to go out there and say it. Um, big frame guy, yes. Uh, boundary corner, understand. But also understand that, you know, National Football League, there ain't no such thing in no boundary corner. Them, them hashes are tight. And so <laughs> ain't no boundary corner in no National Football League. So 
<laughs> thank God in college football, the hashes are wide. So yes, it, but that's a lot to me. If you want to plus your game, yeah, hey, listen, the boundary court, that's a lot of running because the ball go to one side. I got to go back to the other side. I got to go. That's a lot of running. Hey, learn, get, oh, get your game collectively good all over, but he's a safety six, two, um, 200 and some pounds. I mean, he could be an excellent free safety. He got good ball skills. He's long. He's rangy. Um, playing the cornerback position is great. It's great to say he's a boundary corner. But, again, he's going to have to understand, if I'm going to play this boundary corner, I got to eliminate the whole entire boundary. And that's the thing that watching the spring game, I saw it was a play where, you know, the fast twitch muscles and stuff, especially going against these speedy receivers, it's going to be a little tough. I mean, Ohio State, I mean, he got, he got to go against a lot of great receivers at Ohio State. But, um, again, it's, it's when I'm watching him. Jamison, I think Jamison has the ball skills. He just has to 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 to, to home in the, the, the technique. You know, that's the biggest thing for him is technique. He relies so much to me on his athleticism instead of his technique. Um, you know, when you get going against good receivers, it, it, a lot of times it's best athlete versus best athlete, but then it comes down to who has the most technique, who's the most technical. And that's where he has to understand and where he comes in is understand that his technique is going to have to take over and trying to be the most athletic type. Um, but after that, again, it goes back to where's the depth in that room and understanding where, you know, if a guy does go down, you know, who's going to be that guy that steps up and, Last year they had some some um, guys they brought in, but this year you got a lot of young guys, so there's not a lot of experience in that room. So, to me, Jamison, who's going to be the senior in that class, he needs to step up and hone in and and uh, um, get these guys to 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 like focus and, and get focused. Because I mean, again, it can't be the the same thing that this team has been seeing for quite some time now, or it's going to be a long season again. All right, punter, I've got a six and a half. And I know you're a big fan of Dicker the kicker, and it, he turned into Dicker the punter last year. I'm putting I'm putting some faith in Isaac Pearson. Um, you know, he, he has some good kicks in the spring game, but we all know, you know, when they when they they when they send the house at you, it's a little different. So I mean, not much to say. Got to see more of the game. I mean, again, Dicker the kick. He did when 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 Dicker got his name, it was more of that that. Oklahoma rivalry game where he hit that clutch kick. So, um, and he did a lot of those, he did a lot of that in his, in his career. So again, um, I feel bad for him when you got to come in and, and, you know, you got a guy like that and then you got to come up and step up to the plate, but Hey, that's, that's the game of football. It's, um, it's, it's all about that pressure and can you step in right away and be that guy? All right. Defensive end, outside linebacker and tight end. I have a six. I like the tight end position way better. Okay. Way better. Um, Why? You you got you, – you, 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 I just like them better. I mean, you got guys at that position that can actually play. I mean, you saw right there in the spring game. I mean, they're making catches. They're physical. Um, they can block. They can do a lot of things. You're going to need that position to help out this offensive line. So I like the tight end position a lot because I think now you finally got – some prototypical mismatch type tight ends at the position, not to mention that are very physical. And again, you, you got the quarterback position that, hey, listen, we know in the past, guys like Andrew Beck and those guys, when you got somebody that that's that escape goat, hey, you want to bring the house, want to bring five or whatever it may be, we're going to get the ball out quick to the tight end. So, And then a lot of times we look at these safeties, especially in the Big 12, they don't really match up too well when it comes to the tight end position. You know, you like a lot of more defense, like corner size safety. So I think I'm going to like this position a lot better. Like you look at OU, you look at Iowa State. Um, in the past, they had really good tight ends. And I think that's something that you look at what Sark has had in the past, the tight end position. So I feel like they improved in that position. All right, so a defensive end outside linebacker, Texas misses out on O'Shawn Mathis. He he picks Nebraska. You mentioned Baron Sorrell. Uh, Justice Finkley's a guy who got some reps at uh, at defensive end. You got Ovi Gofu. 
Anyone stand out to you at that position? Uh, I mean, it's just hard. It's hard when you you had guys in the past that get after the quarterback. And so that's the one thing that we know Texas does not do a good job of getting after the quarterback. You got some some older guys there. Um, Coach Stark said that Finkley's a, a go-hard guy that gives you uh, has a motor going. Um, you look at a guy like Joseph Osai, who that's pretty much what he did, just had a motor going. And so you, you're you you're still trying to find that guy who can, at a consistent level, just get after a quarterback. And that's where – that's why I say this defense, it all comes together because it's hard for me to look at the linebackers and the safeties. But when I look up front, it's – it's it's not establishing the, the 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 it's not establishing the, the ground you know it's not establishing it so um the trenches so that's why it's hard for me to to look at the other positions because again Jameson and Watts is not going to be good unless you get pressure on a quarterback the safeties are not going to look good unless he's being able to stop the run up front and they don't got to get involved in the run game the linebackers are not going to get good if if Coburn or Sweat or somebody can't take up two old linemen and prevent the guard from pushing up to the next level. No one's going to get better unless everything up front gets better. And so those positions can't be six and a half and sevens if the guys up front are <laughs> fives and sixes. They can't be any better if they ain't no good up front. So I think collectively you get a defense about a five, five and a half until they do something better. That's just me personally, how I feel like unless they are able to stop the run, prevent the deep ball, uh, stop giving up, you know, 18, you know, three score leads, you know, that's, that's the thing. You're giving up three score leads. That's going into, you know, second half. And I got to score three times. Any defense just say, Hey, listen, this is easy. Like, this is easy. We know they got us. This is easy. But again, I've seen the freshman quarterback come in OU and just have a field day. I've seen, you know, up Baylor. Baylor doesn't even throw the ball deep. And we realize they got a receiver that runs a 4 1. They don't even throw it deep. All they did was dink and dunk all the way. It was quick passes. And then they handed the ball off. Oklahoma State, we knew Sanders is not as he's not a slinger, but at third, fourth quarter, just ran the ball. So, again, it goes to until collectively as a unit, y'all take home say, hey, listen, you know what? This is not us. We're going to change this. Then it's, it's hard to hope that they're going to be better this year when you've seen it. Because a lot of these guys, understandably, we've seen them for the last couple of years. So if you've been doing something from first, second, and third year, what it makes you think of some guys going on four years we didn't watch you play, or even five. I don't see how I'm going to see something different if I haven't seen anything from the first, second, because it never mentally, it never had you mentally turn it on and say, I need to get better, if, if that means anything. Because I looked at myself as a freshman, you come in, 60, 70 tackles as a nickel. Second year, we get a whole new D coordinator. They didn't really like the nickel position, but still 40-some tackles, still was a dominant force on special teams. Then junior year, you lead the team in tackles, and then you come back your senior year and you out, you get more tackles as the safety position. So it was like progressively got better every year. I looked at Aaron Ross, who split time, split time, Junior, senior year, he starts, he wins a Thorpe Award. I look at Terrell Brown, who got some time, got some time, came a prominent starter, broke his toe, still played in games with a broke toe at the cornerback position. And due to stuff off the field, he still goes on to get drafted fifth round and play 10 years in the National Football League. So for me, Brian Robson started linebacker, goes to the defensive end position, goes on to have a good career. So I progressively saw players get better. And now for me to look at this team now, it's 
am I seeing these guys get better every year? And if the answer is no, then what makes me think that this year is going to be different than the last few years? And I don't, and I don't think it can't happen, but again, it's something that has to happen from within, from within themselves, from within them, them policing each other, from with them realizing that they got to get tired of, Hey, we keep going out there getting our butts kicked, but it has to happen from them. It can't be anybody else coaches. It can't be nobody else telling them what they must do. They have to want to do it and they have to do it themselves. Who, who do you like on this defense? Like maybe at the safety position, even if he's a young cat, like Mo Blackwell showed up in the spring scrimmage with some big hits. And he came and he, again, he was a linebacker. They put his safety. So it's, I mean, um, Anthony Cook. I, I think I say I think a lot of these guys got the potential. I I think they do, but again, a lot of these names of guys that you know, the hardest thing for me when I'm looking at it is, I, I, I it's like a revolving door of trying to figure out who's going to be the guy if you see what i'm saying like I, to me no one has solidified no one has took that next step to say hey that's the guy if you see what i'm saying like no one has took so for me um it's like the position is wide open i mean you go get a transfer like watts to come in and naturally he takes your position at the at the corner position so now you over here trying to find another position you, you see what i'm saying Outside of, oh, that position is so good that I literally have to just work my tail off because when he leaves, now it's my turn. But it's, oh, he's going to mess up. He's out. Put him in. Oh, he messed up. He's out. Put him in. I mean, Schooler came in last year and started at free safety. He ended up getting better as the season progressed. And he was a receiver the year before. So to me, that's where you're asking yourself, you know, Cook was there. Uh, you know, all these guys were already there. And you say, hey, listen, we're going to bring new coach regime comes in. Hey, let's bring him over here on the defense side of the ball and let him start at free safety. And it's like, really? Like, so you're telling me we just brought that guy over and he, beat out every single person that we're talking about right now if you see what i'm saying so that's where it's when you say yes i hope i wish i pray i i don't hate on any young man i want them to be good i want them to be successful but it's one of those things that if i continuously watch the same thing every week and last year and the year before and the year before you going into this season is like what's my expectations it's the last thing that you showed me on film the last thing i saw with my own eyes is what i believe then if i go back in 2020 season you did the same thing then if i go back to 2019 you did the same thing i can't expect 2022 to be any different you yeah. can say whatever you want to say but until you show it, again, that, so that's where I kind of understood what Sarkeesian was saying with um, Ojimo when he was, you know, it's like, no, Ojimo, police that in his locker room. Police that. You ain't got to tell everybody else. No, you police it. Police it. Yeah. Do it from within. Because if you want to know what the good teams do, that's what they do. They police it from within. And they handle the situation accordingly. You can't sit there and, you know, air out the dirty laundry to the public. That needs to be because now if things bad happen, well, you remember what Ojimo said. So that's where I'm like, hey, listen, the team has to look each other in the eyes. The team has to look at the man next to him. The team has to hone in together, collectively together, be a brotherhood and go out there and step inside those white lines and fight together. When I'm almost afraid to ask you about the offensive line. That's the last position and that's got a five on it. Um, Ooh, you gave him a five? Ooh. <laughs> I, I, I mean, 
again, uh, is it going to take all these young guys to come in, Michael? And say, oh, they, I, I would say this: some of these young guys have to be ready to come in and be ready to play. Yeah, because even if you're not ready to play, you know injuries do happen, and you might have to play. But I mean, again, it's it 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 comes into it's it's the same thing. I mean, it's collectively together as a team. It's it's the same thing. Um, they got to want it, you know. You got to get tired of everybody talking about it. I mean, you you, you got to want it for yourselves. I mean, and I think that's that's the biggest thing right now is like, hey, listen, you know, I know they got the NIL money and everything else, but there's a lot more money if you get your name called on Sundays. Trust me, a lot more money. And everything else that y'all are into is 18, 19, up to 22-year-old young men. It gets even better when you're 23, 24, and you're in a whole nother city on another team. It's a lot better. So – um, understand that, you know, the small victories now um, grow to bigger victories in the future. And so they got to understand that. I mean, right now you got a running back like Bijan. Hey, listen, you block and that man gets a Heisman Trophy as a coaching staff, you look and say, who was on the offensive line to help him do what he did? You can ask Derrick Henry. You can ask all the other Alabama running backs. Almost every one of those offensive linemen gets drafted because, hey, they did a phenomenal job getting into the second and third level. So if they understand that, the way I played, every week y'all was coming to watch Michael Huff. And before that, y'all was coming to watch Nathan Vasher. So I just need y'all to say, who, who is number 27 every time? Who's number 27? Then the last year, you coming to watch 31. Aaron Ross got the Thorpe Award. That, you need to, when you're watching him, you need to say, who's that 27? And that was the mindset of, no matter what at all times, you know, understand that if they're coming to watch certain players this year, if I'm on the offensive side of the ball, you know, every scout in America is watching Bijan. But hopefully when they watching Bijan, they turn on the film. They're like, Oh, hold on. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? You got to have those type of mindsets. So again, if, if they want to play in the next level, <laughs> it, block your tail off this year. Guarantee. They'll be looking at you. Trust me. They will be looking at who is this guy. I love it. I love it. All right. Before we let you go, Michael, um, anything new going on outside? You're doing a great job on LHN, by the way. Um, you know, you're in business. You you're you got Hollywood. What's the latest? Uh, shooting a reality TV show starting uh, next week. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, me and uh Brian Arakpo and our other business partner Brian Henson. So we we're still trying to go Hollywood. Still I love trying. it. We're trying to catch up to Aaron Ross. He's Hollywood right now. He just aired last night on uh Bravo. You know, he's a uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta with his wife. So we're trying to catch up. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he was on last night. It was funny. It was not. It was. I mean, it was just. You know, you know. And when you know somebody and then you're watching them on TV. So, and I got another one of my good friends I went to high school with. He was on another show too. So I'm like, hey guys, we all got to, I got to catch up to y'all, y'all status. So can you tell it like what channel or what? So it's going to be on Roku. We're not on a channel. We're going to be on Roku. So Roku okay. is starting. So we're going to, they're filming it. We already signed a deal for a six episode season one. And uh, we will be filming for six weeks. So. All right. Yeah, What's we'll it? See. Do we have a title? Uh, they're trying to come up with some, but it's going to be more like the cup. You know, we're now like the franchise is the cupcake guys. So um, we'll see. Okay. All right. And are Sonya and, and uh, A. Ross, are they like permanent on Housewives? Yes, yeah, she, has, she has a Georgia peach. So, yeah, she's, she's good to go. She's on there. How about that? Yeah, family and all. Her mom, her dad. I saw them last night. Uh, Ross, little little Deuce, little Ross. So it was a good little, good little segment. Oh man! I need, I need to text him this morning and joke with him. Oh my God! I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, that's sad to say, but you got to go to Bravo to check in on the fellas. You know? Hey man, Bravo on Sundays. Tune in. Hey Michael, always love the conversation. Appreciate it so much. Um, thanks, man. Thank you. All right. For Michael Griffin, I'm Chip Brown of Horns247.com. Thanks, everybody, for checking in on the flagship podcast interview. Until next time, stay safe and keep the faith.